Well, well, well. If it isn't Mr. Toadish, who's going a triple goddamn sledgehammer opener. But we don't care about this guy. This guy is our enemy in this game. This replay is actually submitted by Mr. Spatty over here, who's standing off with the old double storm caller, like second wave chef coming in here with medium arriving, I guess. Crawlers, it'll be interesting to see what opening unit we go here. Stormcaller's not exactly renowned for their ability to swat down uh, sledgies. It looks like we're just going to go anti-chaff first, which, to be fair, the Stormcaller's against crawlers and uh, tanks. Probably not going to get the most done, and so just at least getting one of those issues taken care of nice and early. Um, does feel pretty good, I suppose. I think I'm a bigger fan of having the um, Acolytes nice and snug close to my uh, stone callers just to protect them from crawler chaff having them a little bit more central as well um means that they can like more readily respond to either side if there's like an aggro situation going on but even still the positioning is gonna work out okay apart from this poor guy who after getting a few decent shots off will eventually go down to the tanks over there a bit less more healthy than the left side even still, looks like we pretty much got what it takes to win this opening game. Oh, I haven't even mentioned the theme of this replay. What am I doing, man? I'm, I'm, I'm off form, I'm out of practice. It's all going to hell. The theme of this replay is going to be Fist Fortresses. Oh, yes. Fortress Fists, one of the greatest techs in the game. We actually lose this opening round at the end. Sledgehammer's just too good. Ooh, the middle Sledgehammer's actually got a rank up as well. That's quite scary to deal with. And, okay. The Maxman or the Phoenixes? Just because it's three Maxmen? Um, yeah, I feel like the Maxman probably better. Just because there's, there's so many entities on the field that you want to kill off, right? Man, this is such a spread formation, dude. Like, for Blue to be spreading out tanks this much, it feels a little bit unusual. Usually when you see Sledgehammers, they kind, they're kind of, like, more central leaning. Because they have, like, slow move speed, right? So you want them to be able to, like, react to either side uh, quite quickly. Whereas if you've got a tank set over here, it takes them forever if they're going to cross the map and go help out over here eventually, like after they've won, you know. A little bit unorthodox to see. But alright, man, we see some Acolyte upgrades. We see late arriving fangs. Oh, what a missile, dude. That was tight. Dude, you never see... This is really, really rare that you see, like, backline fangs like this. Are they going to get forwards in time? It's a little bit sketch because they move so slowly that they struggle to get ahead in time to protect your guys, you know? That's why you typically see, like, more backline crawlers and forward-facing fangs. Just because the fangs take a while to get there, but... I mean, it, it can work out as long as they're combined with the other mid-range chef just to buy them time to get back, but... Uh, to get in, rather. But okay, man. All of that aside, the blue tank's quite terrifying. They will get the building down. I wonder if these tanks actually have what it takes here. Maxman, the Stormcallers actually land a few good shots there. And, all right, man. Red beginning to pull it back. Ooh, I didn't even check this, but he's also playing Heavy Armor Specialist. Which is going to help out quite a bit when it comes to the old Fortress drops. I should also note as well that Sparty himself described in his own words as this is probably the best game he's ever played in like a thousand hours of Mecha Bellamore, you know, however long he has played. It was quite a significant amount of time. I can't quite remember, but... Best game he's ever played. I can't even remember what my best game would be. You know, because you never play the game, Cobb. All you do is catch to the people's games. Yeah, shut up. Okay. I don't have as much time these days. Leave me alone. <laughs> uh, I am going to make some time a little bit later on tonight to test out the new survival mode, though. Let me tell you that for free. I've been playing the crap out of the new survival mode. Well, I say play the crap out of it. Like, 10 minutes every now and then, you know, when I have some time. I don't really have time to play a real game. So I try and win survival mode on a very hard. Just can't do it. It's too much RNG involved. It sucks. So I'm really, really glad that they updated that. Ah, so I'll be getting to that kind of soon. But okay, man. What are we looking at here? We we'll see, like, this is a much, much more conventional chaff setup over here. We've got some crawlers on the back for Sparty as well. On the other side, I'm a bit surprised to not see more come down. Oh, we went for the forward-facing fangs instead. They were camouflaged, okay? I didn't see them. Okay. And all right. Missile's gonna connect again. Ooh. That's why you gotta be really, really careful, man, with how you order units. Especially maxmen will move one meter per second faster than tanks. And so they will catch up and stack up if you place a maxman just behind tanks like that. 
And yeah, very, very vulnerable to missiles, as we're seeing. Now the Fangs actually have time to get in and protect these marksmen, which is their only purpose in life. Ooh. Gonna start trading blows now, but it's not gonna matter too much. They just have the numbers. Okay, cool. So if we're gonna see any further chaff come out from Sparty, I'd imagine it's gonna be crawlers here and crawlers here. Uh, at the very back line. And then we're getting towards the rounds where we can start to become big spenders. 800 supply to burn in this round. Supply specialist is still pretty good. Come like round four. I think that that's fine. I'd imagine that both players are going to pick that up, by the way, so... I'd be quite surprised if uh, Spidey didn't grab it as well. Ooh. Range coming out on the arc lights, And just more arc lights coming down. That's quite odd. Not gonna lie, Spidey did in the end go for Supply Specialist over here. He also goes for range in his arc lights too. Okay, dude. Alright, alright, alright. So, Spidey is running like the heavy carry arc light style. In fact, they're running exactly the same techs uh, on their carry acolytes. This is going to be carry acolytes sure down a little bit. I'll tell you what, though. Blue is getting towards the point where, ooh, instead of placing the backline crawlers, we've just gone for more fangs on the field as well. And Blue is getting to the point where he's going to really, really struggle to deal with these fangs big time if they hit the portable shield button. Whenever there's any more, like, any more than four or five units of fangs, it's something that you've got to be very, very aware of. And honestly, Blue should just like grab a couple of Vulcans next turn. Or, I don't know, even just a few packs of Stangs and just give them range right off the bat. Like Mass Recruit and stuff, you know. He's got he's got to stay on top of these, uh, these Fangs. Else things are liable to get gnarly real quick. Okay, let's speed things up. We got some trades. The barrier's holding up. If this barrier lives, you're so, so happy as red, right? No, it's not going to live. It's going to drop. Ooh. Okay. And surely red still wins, even though both buildings go down. Dude, how often do you see that? Both buildings die on your side of the map and you win the round anyway. Okay. Enhancement module becomes available. Tech specialist also on the table, or I think tech specialist, probably the pickup here. Uh, enhancement module, just a bit late in the game. To be grabbing this, I think. Spidey doesn't waste any time. Goes straight into a tech specialist. And wow, dude. Goes straight into elite marksman. Okay, uh, like, Blue has got to take care of these fangs, by the way. He's losing the chaff battle too handily. Um, crawlers are really, really good at distracting the fangs. But nothing really on Blue's team is that efficient at killing off the fangs. And most importantly, the late arriving fangs as well. Oh, God. Okay, just goes more arc lights. All right. To be fair, though, Spatty maybe should have been thinking about pushing the portable shield button here instead of just going for more damage on the arc lights. I feel like damage is... He's doing okay in terms of damage. Um, While I while I do respect... I, I, I can always respect the Elite Maximum player on uh, arc lights. I do feel like just hitting the portable shield button on the fangs would cause so many problems for Blue and force him to start reacting to what you're doing immediately because suddenly these fangs would take forever to kill off with like these single shot arc lights and stuff. Literally doubles the amount of pellets it's taken to get them all dead, you know? But okay. With the elite maximum on the field, they are gonna, like, the, the uh, arc lights will kill off the tanks a little bit faster, but not by that much. They're not, like, super leveled. And so, yeah, it doesn't look like it made that much of a difference on this round, you know. Usually you want at least a couple of uh, level 3 acolytes. We got the 1 over here, but then we got like a level 1 acolyte there. And I don't know, they, like, just lacking a little bit of value there uh, for how much we spent to get Elite Maxman on that round, I feel. Ah, quick sip of coffee. Okay, the wasps come out. Both players have arc lights with anti-air potential. So I wonder if we're going to see that. Spidey goes into the melting points. Okay. Ooh, and the wasps do actually come out for blue. See, that's a really, really good pick from blue, I think. Uh, to go into the wasps like this. Because he knows now, because Spidey is already invested in late maximum and range. Uh, on the Akis. 
he knows how expensive it would be now for red to go into anti-aircraft ammunition. Right? It would cost like half of red's turn to get this done. Tight. Okay, there it is. However, in answer, the portable shield on the fangs and broad. This is how many units of fangs? Eight, nine, like eight units of fangs? That now take double shots? And now blue's gonna have the same problem that red just had, where yes, he invests in elite marksmen on the acolytes, which by the way, he's got many, many more higher level acolytes, so they gain a lot more from this elite marksman. Like they're really, really scaled up. But at the same time, it doesn't help them kill the chef. So really, I, dude, I'm really, really curious to actually see how this is gonna fly. Like how this is gonna go, man. Ooh, the investment on the crawler mech rage as well. Ooh, you know what? I think Red actually still has this. Even with the Fangs getting shield. I don't think that I don't think that Red has the killing power to get these crawlers dead before they're just up in his face. He doesn't actually have the chaff clear potentially. It's only four arc lights uh, on Red's side, you know? And with no convincing uh, anti-air option either, like the wasps are gonna also be quite the problem. Oh, I mean, the two melting points, they're going to take some killing. They're going to take some damn killing. So there is that. Ah, but yeah, it's just not going to be enough, is it? The Akis are just too safe. The crawlers got in too deep. Ooh. Now, the question I'm asking myself is how the hell does this end up becoming a Fortress Fist game? What insane de-evolution are we going to have to see in this game? For Fist Fortresses to become Sparty's answer. Because, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what was that extended Stonecaller Ridge? Okay. I mean, the Stonecallers are fine. I think. I think they're fine. We've got some Electromag. Well, that's good. I mean, yeah, I, I do like the Electromag and the Stonecallers. It, it helps you win the sniper battle at the end against the Akis. My main concern is that Red still doesn't really have... Anything to quickly kill off the chaff. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Does also go uh, anti-air on the Acolytes, by the way, so that's pretty tight, I think. Like, that's good. That's, something, that's a button that you need to push. I think that that's fine. My main concern would be getting all of the crawlers dead faster, though. Damn. Okay. Let's see how this one pans out. All right. Oil on the ground, but no fire to come down. These are some extremely fast crawlers, man. This is also a speed specialist player, by the way. Yeah, he has two counts of speed specialists, which is why these crawlers are so quick. And I mean, they're really, really getting in there too. Like they're actually making it to the maximum in the middle, look. Oh my God. I mean, it's going to play out much the same as last round. Somewhat unsurprisingly, to be fair. Because, I mean, while the Stormcallers, yes, they can electromag these nerds, and it just kind of nullify them as soon as one missile hits, there's still just so many Arclights, man, that these, like, three or four packs of Stormcallers, they have too much to do. And not enough time to do it. Okay. Ooh, is this going to be it? I think I'd actually... If I were red, I'd actually be going for the Stangs, to be honest. And I'd be giving them, like, explosive ammo and stuff. Is what I'd probably be going. Wow, both places go for the Overlords, all right. Ooh. Will red be tempted to try and make, like, a Giga Brain play here? You go for the anti-aircraft ammunition? I wonder. What is this Vulcan doing? What's this all about? Incendiary Bomb and Sticky Oil... Ooh, yeah, you want the Vulcan, like, here, right? You want the oil and the fire to drop, like, here, if you can. Hit these guys, they come in. Hit these guys as they come in. Yeah, I do like the Vulcan pickup a lot. Ooh, it's actually triple Vulcan pickup. Yeah, so it was a sell on the Overlord on Sparty's side. Just yeets it out of the game immediately. And here we go. I do like the, uh, the mass Vulcan pickup. I think that that's actually key. I think that just mowing down... The crawlers as quickly as humanly possible uh, is actually going to be the key here. As to whether or not we have the firepower to kill a level 4 overlord though. We're talking 72,000 health in that thing. 
And though the Acolytes do have uh, anti-air ammo, they're just not the best at killing off overlords, generally speaking. And there's a lot of fast units on blue that are going to run in front of this overlord. Okay. Down comes the fire. The crawlers are so fast that it's only going to really kill the backline crawlers, but it does get most of them dead. And that's the important thing. There's even some uh, fangs left alive in the middle to actually start poking down the fangs here. Which is a big deal. So all of the chaff on blue is dead very, very quickly now. And we still have some nerds left alive behind the uh, melting points here. For red. Look how much fires on the ground, dude. <laughs> which does make a big, big difference. Now, the Arclights. Do we win the sniper battle this time? Now that we won the chaff battle a little bit faster, it looks like maybe we do... This, though, is going to be the damn problem. Dude, I knew it. I could smell it. I could sense it. That we weren't quite going to have the damage to get this guy dead. And oh my god, actually, just the anti-missile turrets are going to do enough to keep the Acolytes on the right side alive. So we win the left, but not the right. Close, man. Close. Ooh. Sparty's starting to sweat, man. All right. Elite Stang, Amp Core. Vulcan's Descent? You know, I tell you what it is. I think Vulcan's Descent will be tight here, man. I just dropped the damn Vulcan's Descent, like, right here. You know what I'm saying? B like, mostly because we've got a couple of, uh... couple of techs to go with it. Looks like we went for the Amplifying Core on the Melting Points instead. Fair enough, fair enough. I mean, it's never bad. I just feel like because we already have uh, Incendiary Round and Sticky Oil Bomb, we just drop like a Vulcan right here. All of the crawlers will run towards the Vulcan. You know, they'll all be like aggroed by it. Or at least the uh, these back three will be. And all this uh, by fire be purged. I don't know, like, Blue surely is going to go Subterranean Blitz here, right? He has to. I mean, there's so much fire on the ground. He has 450 supply left. And he just went over... He's just placing more missile defense? No subterranean blitz on the crawlers against Quad Vulcan? That's quite surprising. That's quite surprising. I mean, it's like the natural counterplay to make sure that your crawlers live at least a few seconds longer. Buys you a whole bunch more time uh, per unit of crawlers. But alright, man. That's so much missile defense, dude. Oh my god. What the hell? Okay. Well, let's see how it goes. The missiles come in again. Tell you what, man, the missile defense stopped a decent... Oh, no, it didn't. It didn't. I thought it stopped a decent amount of the fire. Then the fire spawned in. Didn't re They didn't really get anything done. They might help win the trades at the end again, though. Missile defense turrets shooting down the Stormcaller projectiles could be enough to take the win once again. This time, the melting point looks like it might get to latch on the Overlord, which it does. And this time with the Amplifying Core, it is going to outlive the dam and get the job done. This side's a little closer. But it's really all up to the missile defense uh, turrets now. Which, once again, on this side, dude, they actually just take the dub. And oi 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 oi. I really thought that Sparty had that round. It's getting closer and closer, though. Ah. Huge Electromag Blast. Both players actually going Electromag even. Okay. Dude. I just realized it's round 10 and there's not a single fortress being unlocked. Let alone placed. This is really a fortress game. This is really a fortress game, dude. Oh, wow, we finally pick up the uh, charge shot on the Acolytes as well. Which, yeah, that's definitely quite overdue. This guy over here is an actual raid boss, by the way. Okay. Oh, wow. Further wasps coming out for blue, man. I just noticed as well these have aerial specialization. I don't think there's even a single air unit. On red side of the field. 
I wonder if that was Blue trying to almost preemptively pick the uh, aerial special and just didn't come off. And I just didn't notice. Alright. Really, really like this oil placement here. Guarantees a lot of toasted crawlers. Ooh, it's another round where Blue doesn't go subtree and blitz, though. Hmm. Alright. Shields get cracked. Instantly. Walls of flames. Crawlers all dead about now for Blue. And so all that's left is his backline, man. The crawlers are dying very, very fast here. Very fast indeed. But you know what? I ain't gonna write off Blue anymore, man. Somehow, somewhere. His acolyte's been absolutely popping off. I mean, look at these three guys. Three guys staring down everything defended by the turrets. They actually gonna do it on this side again. Oh my god. They're actually gonna do it again, dude. It's gonna be another win with like three acolytes left alive. Oh my god! <laughs> Bro! Oh, okay, here it is! It's about to happen! Surely this is it! This has gotta be it now. Okay, the Fist Fortresses? Ooh, you know what, man? They're, like, Fist Fortresses would be... There they are, man. There they are. Oh my god, look at the fuck tight skin on these, dude. They pick up shield right away. Huge. Well, actually, the shields would die pretty quickly because these Acolytes are so, so powerful uh, on blue side now. Straight into anti-air barrage as well. Okay, well, you know you just gotta spam more fortresses now. If that's the uh, route that you're gonna go down, Sparty. You have enough supply to buy a couple more fortresses. And, um... Oh, hang on, what was that? What did I do? What, what was that? Oh, it was Crawler Production on the Melting Points. Okay. Crawler Production on the Melting Points and Subterranean Blitz on the Crawlers. Still no Blitz on Blue's side, by the way. That's crazy to me, dude. That's cra- that's nuts. This guy's a psychopath. Oh my god. You gotta respect how many uh, anti-missile turrets are down as well, man. Uh, oh my god. I mean, the fortress is already doing okay. If they can live to get off like a second round, there it is, of uh, anti-missile tech. It's just gonna help to exhaust the turrets that little bit more. They are gonna start to drop now. Okay. The crawler production on the melting points could actually be a bit of a game changer here, by the way. They just crapped out another wave of crawlers. I didn't even see the crawlers come out here. Oh, there they are, man. They're, they're in like a subterranean blitz, I think, around here somewhere. Well, they were before they perished horribly. Dude. Is this actually... Is this even going to be a win? Oh my god, getting the building kill. Is that going to do it? Is that what gets it done? The missile defense is still shooting all that crap down. One acolyte to rule them all. Oh my god, Spatty, dude. You can't tell me that your butt cheeks weren't clenched. I know it, man. Ash cheeks straight granite after that round. Okay. Senior attack specialist, the lightning storm coming out, man. Okay, we're plopping it right here. It's fine, I guess. Okay, it's just time for the fortress spam now. Gotta be, ain't it? It's just gotta be. Dude, you killed a lot of his uh, sentry turrets here as well. Like, that's really, really expensive for Blue to deal with. Oh, dude. Like, I swear to God, Blue should have won these rounds. He, he should have been winning these rounds, man. But, but just slightly, like, Blue's got to be so mad that he hasn't won the game yet. You know? There's the speed. There's the goddamn uh, enhanced range. Similar deal. Okay. I mean, it's just a lot of fortresses, dude. Did Do the fists can the fists actually play a big part in this game? They have 180 meter range. We're almost to the point where the acolytes like they almost outrange. Actually, some of the acolytes do already outrange the uh, fortress fists, which is pretty insane. Okay, here we go, man. Huge missile salvo coming down. Oh, I should have righted my camera before the lightning storm went off. 
Okay. Second missile salvo coming out of the fortresses now. It's going to connect decently well. There's still a few fortresses left alive. On the far side. Just by in time. They've got to get these overlords dead though. Second wave of wasps is about to pop out of the overlords now. It's just a mass overlord strategy. Here it comes. It's going to buy some time. But there's only a couple of overlords left alive on the far side over here. Okay. Dude. These rounds are so close, man. These rounds are actually so close. Difference this time? Does the melting point actually get to survive here? Oh my god. Oh, building going down is really rough. No way, dude. No way, look at this. Look at how close these rounds are, dude. What the hell is this? Oh my god. Um, yeah, all these are garbage, but yeah, but one. Okay. Absolute shield spam. Dude, I'm almost tempted to watch this from uh, Sparty's perspective, but for the sake of keeping things clear, I'll try and keep the camera steady from now on, because there's a hell of a lot going on. Oh my god, there it is. The Fortress Fists come out. We've also got some additional Stangs coming down. Which are going to arrive late, which I think is pretty tight. Yeah, I was going to say, aero specialization here, then just borrow money to get the uh, enhanced range and the uh, speed buff. I think that that's good. We want to keep these Stangs as safe as possible, because they, they, they are what is going to be killing like the late arriving Wasps and the uh, Wasp Swans coming off of the Overlords, ideally. And so we've got to keep them safe. Okay, dude. Let's automatic camera this one, man. Here comes the missiles. And you know what? Quite a lot of missiles connect now from the fortresses. Got another countdown coming in now. Second salvo is about to go off. Here it comes. Just mulching down packs of wasps here. Enormously awesome. I gotta admit, I didn't even notice any of the fists go off. Literally didn't even see it. This is so much chaos going on. But that's all good. Look at the arc lights, man. They actually just contend quite handily with the melting points. They're actually doing pretty okay. Dude, he's not going to die this round either. Like, not even close. Well, I mean, it's a lot of damage, but it's still not close to death. All right. Senior Defense Specialist. Senior Defense Specialist. Yeah, makes sense this late in the game. Okay. Dude. Man, Senior Defense Specialist combined with Heavy Armor Special. Look at the health of these level 1 fortresses, dude. Nearly 100k, man. It's actually ridiculous. Steel Bowls. Okay. So the War Factory's coming out, right? No. He can't, because he didn't have the steel balls unlocked. He's, he's already unlocked the steel balls. Okay. I mean, I thought surely maybe like missile defense, war factory, buy the mobility beacon, drag it back or something. And just have it spam units? Spam phoenixes or something? Maybe that would have been the player. I don't know, dude. Uh, all right, dude. All right, all right, all right. Okay. I'm determined to try and spot any single one of the fortresses. Shoot out their uh, rocket punch. This round. Because honestly, I just didn't even see it in the last one. Okay. I still can't believe that there's no uh, Subterranean Blitz on Blue's Crawlers. But I should stop harping on about that now. Alright man, here we go. Here we go, dudes. Huge FPS lag until things start dying. Oh my god. Oh. I still can't see a single fist go off, dude. <laughs> oh, I saw one. Okay, I caught one just there, dude. Oh my god. But hey, look at this landslide victory, dude, in the end. Dude, this is why you just never give up, never surrender, man. This is it right here. This is it. 
Oh, type man. Hey, this was an epic game, to be fair, Spidey man. Christ, I've been recording this one game for like 30 minutes. What the hell? And that was with me speeding up at certain points. So, dude, Spad, you were in this game for like 40 minutes, dude. That's crazy as hell. <laughs> That's actually nuts. That's like a game of Dota 2, man. But hey, you know what? Hope you all enjoyed Spatty's most epic game of his life. Pretty tight stuff. My, uh, my, 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 my poor goddamn, uh, uh, my poor PC clearly agrees. But hey, man, crazy as hell game. Thanks so much for submitting this one, dude. If you want a chance of your own replay being broken down and reacted to, make sure to post your craziest replays in the official Mechabellum, Mechabellum Discord in the share your replay section. And, um, yeah, as always, that's linked down below in the pinned comment and at the top of the description in these happy little videos. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all did enjoy. And I'm going to catch all of you all just a tad bit later, man.